Hello again, and welcome back to Operations Management. In this session, we're going to be continuing our discussion of inventory, but this time we're going to be talking about the impact of quantity discounts, otherwise known as price breaks. A quantity discount is what happens when your supplier says, I can give it to you for a lower price as long as you order a minimum amount. Okay, so for example, it's normally $10 per unit, but if you order at least 10,000 of them, they'll drop the price to $9. That's an example of a quantity discount. But when we did the inventory analysis, we started with economic order quantity, EOQ, and that assumes a constant cost per unit. In fact, when we calculate EOQ, we're just looking at setup and holding costs. We're not looking at anything else. So if we're not looking at a change in price per unit or cost per unit, how do we know how much to actually order? What we do is we actually use the EOQ as the starting point of our analysis. For every unit price that we're given, we're going to calculate an EOQ. Then we're going to see how much is created in that EOQ, what is our quantity, and compare it to the range for a given price. For example, if our EOQ that we calculate is bigger than the maximum range for the price, we don't continue with that price because we know we won't be using it. If the EOQ falls within the quantity range for a price, then we'll take a look at it and calculate the total cost but this time we're going to include the unit costs. If the EOQ is too small to get that price, well then we're going to replace the EOQ with the minimum quantity in order to get that price. Then we're going to calculate the total cost, including unit costs. Then we'll compare all of our total costs, find the lowest one, and that gives us our quantity and unit price. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose the supplier of batteries with which you make smoke detectors offers you a discount based on the quantity purchased. If you order less than 5,000, the unit cost is $10. Between 5 and 10,000, it's now only 950. And for orders of 10,000 units or more, we're now only being charged $9. On average, we use 54,400 batteries each year. That's our annual demand. And every time we order batteries, we have a setup cost of $1,000, and our cost of capital and physical holding combined is 17% of the unit cost per year. So, how many batteries should we get? And what is our total cost? Let's take a look at it. Here are our key variables. We have an annual demand of 54,400, setup of $1,000, holding cost is 17% times the unit cost, but now we have three different unit costs. The first one is $10 a unit for quantities less than 5,000. The second one is $9.50 a unit between 5,000 and 10,000. The third one is $9 a unit for quantities over 10,000. So what do we do? We're going to calculate the EOQ for each one of those unit costs. The first one was $10, and we come up with an EOQ of 8,000 units. The second one was $9.50, and we have an EOQ of 8207.8. And the third one of $9, we have an EOQ of 8432.7. So now we're going to compare them with the quantities needed for those prices. Well, with the first one, what happens is that we only get a $10 cost if we have less than 5,000 units. And we're going to be ordering 8,000. So we ignore this particular EOQ because it uses a $10 cost, which we would never incur. The second one of 8207.8 actually falls within the, the range for the quantity of between five and 10,000 units. So we will use that EOQ when we go to calculate the total cost. The third one has an EOQ of 8432.7 for the price of $9 per unit. But in order to get that $9 per unit, we have to order 10,000. And this is much less than that. 
So we can't use 8432.7. So what we do is we use the minimum quantity for the $9 price, which is 10,000. Then we go and we calculate the total costs. We have two options. One where we're using the EOQ of 8207.8 and we've got a cost of 950 per unit. So we calculate out using the total cost equation and that's 530,000, 55 and 60 cents. Now remember that number because we're going to go take a look at the next option where we replace the EOQ for the $9 unit with 10,000 units. We have to use 10,000 units because that's the minimum amount to get the $9 price. Again, we calculate the total cost and this time it's 502,690. It's actually lower than the cost when we use the EOQ with the price of 950. So in answer to our question, we're actually going to order 10,000 units at a cost of $9 each for a total annual cost of 502,690. So what you see here is that the EOQ does not always work. Sometimes we have to make some adaptations. And as we continue with inventory analysis, you'll see some other changes to our analysis. I'll see you then.